Imagine yourselves as new parents, and for the first time, you want to take your kid to the park. You have high expectations to be, for it to be a happy moment, but as soon as you get there, you start realizing that people are looking at you. You try to push your son to get along with others, but you notice that he's not getting there. Then, after a while, you realize that who they're really looking at is not you, but your son. You start to feel uncomfortable, and you finally decide it's time to go home. Once you get home, you ask yourself what happened, but most importantly, you notice that there is something odd between your kid and the others. So I ask you now, what are you gonna do? Hi, my name is Aranza Nieto. I'm a neuropsychologist, and I'm on the founder of a tech company based on neuroscience for children. And the reason I am inspired to give this talk is because every day on my work, I get to see a reality that I just don't like, and I would like to help change. A reality where children are being excluded, segregated from society, rejected from our educational systems, but most importantly, a reality where their skills are being underestimated. Currently, as a global society, we've been taught to use the word normal and average as part of our vocabulary when that has never existed. Each one of us is made of a different set of skills with areas of opportunity and strengths that, make, that makes each one of us special and unique. The problem is that we're currently putting people on labels, calling anyone with a learning difficulty someone with a neurodevelopmental disorder, or even worse, calling anyone who fits on a criteria of symptoms and characteristics someone with special needs. And you might be wondering, why is this relevant to me? Why is this so important? Well, in order for every one of us to live in a world where diversity is the base of our principles and inclusion is necessary, we must get to understand each one of us better. For, but for that to happen, we must change our cultural mindset of performing evaluations at an early age so that we can get to understand who we really are better. Initially, I put you through the exercise of imagining yourself as new parents going with your kid to the park for the first time. And the reason why I did that is because the, during the course of this talk, I'm gonna be explaining you the story of a family that will support what I'm just mentioning. And as this family, there are many others that go through similar experiences. And that is because every single day, the amount of children with learning difficulties is increasing worldwide. According to the CDC, which is one of the most important health institutions in the world, about 10% of the children's world population has a learning difficulty within the neurodevelopmental disorders. However, based on a field research we performed, we've noticed that for every 20 kids in a classroom, there are six that present a learning difficulty, giving us about 30% of children worldwide that are currently having a certain lack, but that are not currently being diagnosed. Initially, I was thinking of the importance of this talk, and the reason why I'm so passionate about talking to you about this is because as many families that we work with, they've told us that their main problems and situations are based on the amount of time they're wasting on performing evaluations and the time they spend on trying to figure out what is going on with their children. For the families we work with, it takes about four years in order to get an accurate diagnosis. Can you imagine four years of their lives trying to figure out what is going on with their children? For other foreign families we work with, such as from China, Korea, Canada, Sweden, and the United States, even though the reality is a little bit different, it takes about one year to get an appointment in order to get an evaluation. And I ask you, what do you think is the main problem? What do you think these families complain for? Well, for the moms we usually talk with, they usually talk to us about time, about education, about social inclusion. And I'm gonna start with time. Recalling the story from the beginning, the family comes back from the park, and what's the first thing they want to do? They wanna know what's going on with their kid, and they want to find the people 
who are going to tell them the truth. So they go with neurologists, with pediatricians, with neuropediatricians, and not so often, but most importantly, they should go with neuropsychologists. And what they receive from them are news that are with a lack of empathy, with a lack of sensibility. They often receive inconclusive diagnosis, inaccurate diagnosis based on observations performed for 15 or 20 minutes of just looking at a kid. And they sometimes receive information that is not so well defined, as well as, as other comments saying that those kids are not going to accomplish more in life. As well, not to mention the socioeconomic factor, which is really important, because during this process, families take a lot of time and they invest a lot of money on performing evaluations that will not give them the accurate diagnosis. And not all families are um, on the social capacity to afford that. And let's talk now about education. In Mexico, the following happens. Children are being rejected from schools because of a million reasons. Because schools are not prepared to work with the children, because the staff is not well trained, because people do not want to be open to diversity, because there is not enough support from principals in order to do that. And what is happening with the families is that they do want to receive a diagnosis because of the reality they know they're about to face and not because of the characteristics of the diagnosis. And we don't blame families for trying to like the schools. We actually don't blame anyone. It is not anyone's fault. We've met passionate psychologists in favor of inclusion, and we've even met directors that are in favor of trying to implement diversity on their educational systems. But in order for that to happen, a bigger change must be required. Now imagine yourself trying to perform evaluations on every single kid in a school so that we can get to understand each one of them on their, base, on their most important strengths in areas of opportunity. Do you think that education will change that way? Now let's talk about social inclusion. This is correlated to the story I, tell, I told you about the park. We usually hear comments of mothers of our own children who present a learning difficulty saying, my son is not that bad, my son is normal. We then heard the comment saying, my son is not retarded. The problem that with that mentality, we are poisoning our society, and that is what is helping schools to reject children from our educational systems. And that mentality is what is keeping our society segregated and avoiding every one of us to work in teams. Every time someone asks me about the concept of diversity, I explain them the following. So if I was going to perform an evaluation to you, do you think that you will turn out to be just normal? And whenever they say yes, I ask again. So would you think that your memory will be intact, that your social skills will be just fine, that your behavioral skills will turn out to be perfect? And if they say yes again, then I explain that that is impossible because forever the compensation, the rain is wise and it compensates it with another thing. So for every individual to have the same amount of capacity on each of our developmental areas, it's absolutely impossible for that to happen because we are perfectly different and unique. And because of that reason is that we're allowed to work in teams with people who have different skills than ours and that we can work towards change in the world. I'm going to continue telling you the story of the family that I was starting in the beginning with. So after they came back from the park, well, the, the first thing they did was to find some help and go with some specialist. They went with pediatricians, with neurologists, with neuropsychologists, and they all, all told that family that that kid had an inconclusive diagnosis. They told them that he had autism. They told them he had non-development skills, good enough to go into a school. So the family was desperate because after two years and a half seeking for help, that kid, kid turned four years old and he didn't prove any results after receiving two years of therapy and being two years and a half looking for an accurate diagnosis. He got rejected from all the schools he applied for. 
without giving any reason. And the only school he applied and he entered was one the parents didn't really want to be into, but it was the only one who was willing to work with him, only with the exception for hiring an aid teacher who is a person that is particularly working with a kid. So that kid got rejected from four schools. He spent four years of his life trying to figure out what was going on with him. And after all that time, the family saw no results. I met that kid's dad at a conference that was speaking about the importance of diagnosis. And after he finished, he asked me, you know, my son, they told me my son has autism, but I'm not sure of it. And I'm not neglected to receive the diagnosis, but it's just that I don't feel like he fits on the criteria. Could you be so kind to help me? And of course I said yes, and I started asking him some questions, mainly about social skills. So we started talking, and after 20 minutes, I stopped his dad, and I told him, you know, I'm 80% sure that your son does not have autism, but attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity, which could be easily confused with autism because of many reasons, and because of environmental things and variables that were not taken in consideration. But if you will allow me, I will be pleased to perform an evaluation and do some tests in order for you to be accurate about what I'm saying. After six hours spent on an evaluation performed at his home and with the school and with the parents and with a lot of interest and passion towards knowing what that kid was having, we finally got to the conclusion of proving my hypothesis right, that he had attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity and that everything that was do done around his environment was fo focused on autism. And that was the reason that why he wasn't advancing that much. So I'm telling you this story because as that kid, there are many others that go through similar situations because they do not get the accurate diagnosis and that is avoiding them to improve in their lives because they do not have the right intervention program. So that kid's life changed because of a diagnosis, but my life changed because of the conversation I had with his dad. So after we started talk, after we talked about that kid's um, story, his dad asked me, how did you do that? How did you know that it was an autism? So then I explained him that the questions I was making were correlated to some variables, and their variables were correlated to some information, and so on. So after I finished, he explained me that he was the founder of a tech company based on data, and he was thrilled to understand the concepts of neuroscience. So he asked me the most important question in my life so far. Would you, are you willing to work with me so that we can develop something that could help more families, such as mine, to understand the importance of a pre-diagnosis in a lower cost, in a high, at a higher speed, and with a higher accuracy? Because people are not replicable and there is a lot of time required in order for a professional to get the right information to perform an accurate diagnosis. So I just wanted to stay with this in your mind. Diversity, gender equality, pollution, the use of plastic, and many other topics are as relevant as inclusion is, and we should all be talking about it because this is of everyone's concern. And if you're asking to yourself, what can I do for it? For friends, I suggest you the following. Perform evaluations to your kids at an early age. The best thing that could happen is that you get to understand your child better. And the worst thing that could happen is that you get unexpected news, but there will always be a solution for it. And for people that work with children, I'm calling to therapists, educators, everyone who's willing to work with them, just try to be empathic with families, but most importantly, try to be empathic with kids. Encourage to perform evaluations in order for you to understand how to work with a child in the way they better learn. And for everyone, do not judge. Try to be respectful and try to be empathic with everyone else. Do not for an instance think that you are not going to go through this situation, nor your family because chances are that the person sitting next to you is going through a similar experience, and that should be of your concern. We need to change the culture of diagnosis, and we need to change 
the openness we have towards diversity because today we are wasting valuable time these children have that they could be using to shine. Remember their children are the future of humanity and we are not potentiate them as much as we should be. So I want to end with these last three questions. How much time are you willing to give these children? How much hope do you have in them? But most importantly, with an inclusion mindset, how do you see the world becoming in 10 years? Thank you. My word, my word.